Hey all, here OS Reviews. In this video, we're taking a closer look at the Link Plus T4. This is a company that we've checked out some of their other budget offerings on tablets as well as laptops previously. And what makes this new model here in 2024 a little bit more interesting is it now includes a pressure sensitive active stylus pen, kind of similar to say an iPad Pro. It's able to recognize when the stylus in fact is hovering above the screen. And if you're using it to draw, doodle, as well as take notes, it just feels a little bit more responsive. Aside from the stylus support, which is bundled in the box, the tablet, by the way, still retails for around $200 or so, making it relatively affordable, and now has a 2K resolution IPS LCD screen that measures almost 11 inches diagonally. And this year's model has also seen significant improvements to the build quality, which now feels extremely premium and flagship great. The entire thing is made out of a aluminum unibody chunk, aside from the completely flat display, and now supports a few other accessories, including an optional keyboard that should be coming out using the magnetic Pogo contacts, although notably the keyboard isn't included in the base model, only the stylus pen, along with a kickstand is included in the box that also acts as kind of a makeshift case, at least for the back of the tablet, to protect it from scratches. You can also use this area to snap in the stylus, and there's also an integrated, again, kickstand that folds open, providing you with a few different articulated angles. It's actually quite similar to something like a Surface tablet, and you're able to position it quite freely, either folding it all the way flat nearly as a canvas for drawing, or a little bit higher up for consuming media and entertainment. This entire thing just snaps into place using magnets, which do feel pretty secure onto the back of the tablet, which again is constructed entirely out of metal, unibody with embedded antenna lines on the top as well. So very good build for a budget tablet. It's powered by the tried and tested MediaTek Helio G99 processor. It's an octa-core processor, which is 6 nanometers, relatively energy efficient, and comparable to some of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 700 series chips on the market. Again, it's not going to be perhaps flagship grade compared to something like an 8 gen series chip, but more than good enough for getting the basics done, which we'll talk about more later on in the performance part of this review. Otherwise, we have 8GB of built-in RAM coupled with 128 gigs of built-in storage that can be further augmented using a micro SD card that you can pop in on the very top of the tablet there. And it also comes with fairly good battery performance, an 8,100 milliamp hour capacity cell that is rated to last around 12 to 14 hours of use before you have to recharge it again, despite the higher resolution screen, just because the processor here again is quite energy efficient and you also have 20 watt charging using the type c port so it tops up in around just two hours or so not too slow either now in the box aside from again these accessories you also get a factory pre-applied screen protector there's just a quick user guide as well as a bundled usb type c cable as well as fast charger a closer look at the design on the back, we have a 13 megapixel camera that slightly protrudes from the main surface, but when you snap it into the folio case, it becomes flattened out and secures it into place. There's also an LED flash for illuminating objects in the dark, and otherwise it comes with dual band Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth 5.3 on board. The tablet is also pretty slim at only roughly 7 millimeters, so it does feel, again, pretty easy to tote around, carry with you when on the road. Also comes with stereo speakers that are positioned on both the left as well as the right sides of the tablet to give you some pretty good separation as you're consuming content, along with a power key as well as a volume rocker on the very top edge, which are also crafted out of metal and feel pretty tactile and responsive. That being said, the only hardware emission I would like to see in another generation upgrade would be some type of biometric fingerprint scanner. Unfortunately, it doesn't come integrated into the power key on this particular model. And on the front, we have that fully laminated 11-inch display, which, by the way, reaches around 400 nits in the maximum brightness mode, which, again, may not seem quite as high as on a flagship-grade smartphone, but it's actually more than good enough, even if there's a bit of sunlight hitting on the screen. In fact, on this maximum mode, it's even blowing out the camera here, so we have to crank it down a little bit more. So it's a pretty high-quality panel for the price. Bezels are pretty slim, there's no backlight bleeding that I can notice, the corners are slightly rounded off, and up top we have a 8 megapixel camera for video conferencing, which is also pretty nicely placed. I'll also mention that the tablet with the folio weighs in roughly one pound, so it's not bad when you're again sliding it into a backpack, and the style of the skin supports tilt as well as over 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity. So speaking of that, let's take a closer look at the software experience. So it is running on pretty clean version of Android 13 out of the box. 
And so the dragdown notification tray just houses the standard shortcuts for wireless options, screen recording, and location services. There is GPS built on in as well, although there is no cellular connectivity on this model, so just keep that in mind. Now we can swipe up to access all the different applications, aside from the utility tools, which are standard from Google, as well as the Play Store, there is no other apps pre-installed by, again, Link Plus themselves. So all of the drawing apps, as well as the games that you see here, are installed by us for testing purposes. Now, the only thing I will say, though, is even though it's great to give you a Spartan experience that you can customize yourself, since the pressure-sensitive stylus is bundled in, I think they probably could have included at least one drawing app, even if it's just for demonstration purposes. So what it boils down to is you have to install the drawing apps yourself from the Play Store, and note that there are certain ones which may not support pressure sensitivity by default, but ones I've tried that seem to work quite well include Sketchbook as well as Artflow. Both of these programs are free. So speaking of that, let's take a quick look at how the experience kind of fares. The stylus that they're using is not a Wacom EMR pen, so it does still require a battery to operate. It's using a quad A battery that can be replaced after roughly half a year to one year of usage, so not bad. And those batteries usually run for only just a few dollars when you purchase it from Amazon. And I guess one benefit is you don't really have to charge it. And the pen itself does also offer two shortcut keys, so compatible programs allow you to change things like brush strokes as well as go back and delete things, although there isn't really a eraser tip. You do have a clip, however, which prevents the pen from rolling around on a table, and you can also pop it onto a again, maybe a shirt uh, if you are carrying it or popping it onto the back of the case. Uh, that being said, it's not really a magnetic design. It still is kind of a physical clip, so not quite as elegant as something like the Samsung Galaxy tablets, for instance. That being said, again, you have a huge difference in the price that we're talking about. So all things considered, it's fairly well constructed, made entirely out of metal, has a nice heft to it. So a very light stroke, for example, will result in just a line like this, super faint, versus if we apply gradually more and more pressure, you can see the line also start to get thicker and thicker, as well as darker as well. So it has fairly good responsiveness, actually not too much latency at all, even as we are maybe drawing very slow, deliberate lines, there's not too much jitteriness going on either. And then really, Sketchbook is the other app that I found from the store that seems to work really well out of the box. On this particular app, I find the UI to be a little bit more intuitive for things like drawing. You have different pen types and strokes that you can choose, even charcoal effects, which as you can tell, look quite convincing. And similarly, you get some nice amount of pressure sensitivity that you're able to play around with as well. We can try some of the other styles of pens, for example, just a standard pencil. And once again, if we are pressing harder, we'll see a darker line versus a softer line if we press very lightly, as you can tell there. Here's also a side profile view of the angles of adjustment that the kickstand provides, again holding the weight of the tablet quite well using those magnets, and this is the canvas mode versus again going all the way up into a sharper incline for media consumption. It's all working quite well. Taking a quick look at the camera, again it's not really something I expect to be outstanding on tablets compared to on phones that we always have in our pockets. So this thing just gets the basics done. You do have a barcode scanner as well as again flash controls and recording video up to full HD if you want to. It just again is good enough for things like scanning and documents. It seems sharp enough, does have autofocus, and that is pretty much what I expect out of a again tablet camera at the end of the day. It's not going to blow your mind, but certainly is functional enough. And the front-facing camera is quite similar as well. In super low light conditions, it may struggle a little bit more, but if you have a bit of ambient light in the room, it should be still serviceable. Now, the settings of the tablet here also are very stock to what Android provides, super clean, and you have the split-screen views that Android 13 incorporates. It makes good use of the more widescreen aspect ratio and the surface area of the tablet compared to a phone. You're able to go into more adjustments here, including the stylus pen, which you can turn on or off the hovering mode to see that cursor dot uh, appear there on the screen. You can set up a passcode for unlocking the tablet, but there is no face unlock, nor is there again a fingerprint scanner on this particular unit. And DuraSpeed, which is found on most MediaTek powered devices, allows you to temporarily boost the speed onto the maximum that the processor is capable of when you're doing something like gaming, for example. You can also find some basic system properties, including whether you want gesture navigation to be turned on or off, as well as check whether there are any system updates, which, again, for more of a smaller manufacturer that normally 
norm, unfortunately tends to be fewer OS level upgrades, so I don't really anticipate it going above the Android 13 that we see here, even though it's currently pretty much up to date. That being said, you will occasionally get security upgrades here and there, but hopefully we'll see more OS level improvements uh, increasingly in this space. Some takeaways being that the audio quality is actually above average, especially for her budget tablet, since there are four speakers built on in, again, dual drivers on both the left and the right sides. It gets you actually quite easily immersed in the content that you're consuming, whether it's for YouTube, Netflix, it all seems quite satisfactory. Maybe the only thing I would like to see from a hardware perspective, though, would be some type of headphone jack, although unfortunately that's just no longer the norm these days. You can opt for wireless headphones, of course. The display, again, I have to say, is a highlight for a budget device. It gets plenty sharp and overall very good viewing angles, too. So as you are looking at it from different degrees, it doesn't really wash out too much. Colors still seem to be fairly accurate and vibrant looking as well. So you are able to use this for, again, consuming media without too many problems. It has Widevine L1 cert, so you are able to take advantage of the full resolution when you're consuming Netflix, for example, as well as, again, higher resolution for sites like YouTube here. So overall, pretty good. Video playback also seems to be pretty smooth using the Helio G99 processor. Antenna reception quality also seemed to be good. I would say that that's one area where maybe the full metal chassis perhaps isn't quite as strong as a plastic build, ironically enough. So I was able to get around two to three bars consistently, but not always full bars. Uh, that being said, it still played back videos pretty smoothly for the most part, and staying connected was generally not an issue. So for general web browsing, as well as reading back of articles, it remains a pretty enjoyable experience. Again, the screen here looks really sharp, beautiful, and I was able to open up around a dozen tabs or so, and I was still able to hop back and forth pretty easily between those sites. Let's also open up another kind of tab here and see how it renders a more complex page like The Verge. Plenty of videos as well as different ads and elements on the page, but as you can tell here, loading times are still more than satisfactory. It may not be blisteringly fast compared to, again, a ultra high-end CPU, but for the most part, it still is more than usable enough, as long as you give it just a split second for all the elements to finish rendering. If anything, though, again, I do find the software experience to perhaps be just a little bit almost too vanilla at times. For instance, we saw how the stylus support, you have the hover mode function that you can turn on or off in the settings, but that's it. Uh, there are no shortcuts that they built on in, similar to Samsung's Galaxy S Pen, which allows you to take screenshots and annotate uh, or clip different elements of a page, for example. You can find those alternatives yourself in the Play Store, like we did for the drawing apps, but it just takes a little bit more time to research. So again, even though I do typically prefer a super clean software experience, I do think that in this particular instance, it would have been nice if they just threw in a couple more extras. The screen does have a pretty standard 60 hertz refresh rate compared to something faster like 90 or 120. So if you are scrolling super fast and you're putting it side by side with, again, something like an iPad Pro, you may be able to see a little bit of that difference. That being said, again, just for casual usage and in a vacuum, it already feels snappy enough. So when it comes to gaming as well, the Helio G99 is surprisingly really not bad. Uh, you are able to play back most titles, even slightly more demanding ones like PUBG as well as Asphalt Series will still load on here uh, really without too many issues. You have to expect maybe some slight moments of hesitation, some occasional jumpiness, as well as some drop frames every once in a while. But general performance is again more than good enough for a entry-level tablet, and more importantly, the device remains pretty cool during operations. The thermals have been quite good, again, thanks to the Helio G99 processor. And similarly, split-screen multitasking, which is incorporated into Android 13 by default, you can resize the window size as well, seems to perform all right. Again, the Helio G99 is more than good enough for handling two applications at once. So you can open something like Notes, for instance, while consuming a video, and just do a little bit more productivity work that way. So that is more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Link Plus T4. And I have to say, it's a pretty impressive showing as a $200 
budget tablet here in 2024, the build quality feels a lot more expensive than the price here actually implies. The built-in speakers are actually quite loud and impressive, pretty solid battery life as well, in addition to the supported accessories. It's a pretty good package without really breaking the bank if you're considering a newer Android tablet. So you can learn more details if interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews, that's been the Link Plus T4 Android tablet.